Hey guys, what is up? It is Flood here. We have our third lecture. So, three weeks in a row, consistency. Let's go, baby. Anyway, today we'll be talking about improving core mechanics of the game. I think this is a very, very important lecture for people who just want to improve their KD, improve their average damage, and just generally have more fun. I think it's very useful uh, for comp players as well, especially if you're not super experienced. But if you're, if you're really, really experienced, you probably already do this or you're aware of these things so this lecture isn't really for you but you might learn something or maybe a new routine uh, because this is what i do personally all right so for the contents of this lecture we're going to talk about how pubg is different to other games so we can maybe understand it a little bit better and what we need to do to get better at the game we're going to discuss recoil we're going to discuss sensitivity and dpis and we'll also discuss some additional aim training exercises, basically going over what I do personally. And then we'll talk about some extra habits you can do if you really, really want to improve. But this is only for people who really want to see better results and they just want to enjoy the game more. All right, so to start our lecture, we kind of need to understand like what is different between all the uh, battle royales, right? And the way I think of it is that Apex, Fortnite, and Call of Duty Warzone they're very similar games, kind of, like with obviously with different graphics and whatnot and different feel to it. But when we compare Apex, Fortnite, and Warzone, they share a lot of similarities, right? So Apex, in my opinion, is a very fast-paced game. Like, movements are extremely quick, like you can be super fancy with it. Fortnite, you're building, you're doing heaps of shit. It's very intense. Warzone, same thing. You can have phenomenal movement, you can move around. All of these games a very tracking oriented especially apex and call of duty and that is purely because the time to kill is very high on these games it takes a long you have to dump a good amount of bullets into a player to kill them in these two games fortnite i'm honestly not as experienced i haven't played fortnite that much but i'm assuming that it's also tracking oriented with maybe a little bit of pinpoint and i'm thinking mostly for shotgun battles and like a box fights i think that's what people call them but all three of these games they have basically no recoil like i've played all these games the recoil is pretty much non-existent compared to pubg and the time to kill is very different than pubg as well so when i think of pubg i think pubg is a very slow paced game it's very tracking and pinpoint right like we need to be able to track with recoil recoil and tracking combined is how we get kills with ars and pinpoint accuracy is how we get kills long distance, basically just putting our crosshair and our scope on someone's head and shooting them at a long range. DMRs and SRs, that's all. Basically all DMRs and SRs are. But PUBG has a very low time to kill. Pretty much all these guns can kill you instantaneously. For some odd reason, SMGs to the leg just donk you, but that's a completely different subject. PUBG is very, very low. Like, you die instantly in PUBG, especially to good players, especially when you're super close range. So this game is very different, and we need to learn how to adjust to this. But the most important thing about PUBG is the recoil is insanely intense in this game. It's very, very, very beginner... It's not very good for beginners. Like, it's impossible for beginners to learn this and... The reason for that is like how do you learn like you just play the games you go in there you die you, you have to really get a, a good amount of hours before recoil becomes something that comes to you naturally so we're going to go over recoil and uh, we can talk about what i've personally done to get better and what you guys can do and it's super simple you can do it five minutes a day but uh this this tip seriously completely changed my perspective on recoil and i think it will you too all right guys so a recoil improvement plan is something that we're going to implement into our daily practices and training. Every time we boot up the game and we're just getting off work or we're having fun or we just want to relax and decompress, I think personally that we should spend at least 5 to 10 minutes per gaming session doing this routine that I'm going to show you very soon. But I'll just give you a visual of what it's like. So first of all, we are going to train whatever our favorite gun is with an extended mag and no grip in a training mode right we're going to jump in a training mode and we are going to shoot at a wall i'm going to give you guys a very clear example of this right after this slide i'll hop in the game and show you exactly what i mean but just to sum it up we have a no grip then we're going grip and then we're going to go play tdms 
And if we can, honestly, the TDMs aren't as important, but the no grip and grip are super important, five minutes a day. If you do that for a week, I can guarantee you, literally guarantee you, you will get better at recoil recoil control you will be able to kill more players you will struggle less i promise you it takes five minutes a day and in a week you will see reasonable improvement and if you do that for longer you're going to see even more improvement right obviously there's a cap but i think this one thing is so important the pubg recoil is definitely the most obnoxious part about the game right and i think the reason it's the most obnoxious part about the game is because devs don't know how to nerf guns properly. Like, the guns in the game have just gotten stronger and stronger and stronger, and the only way devs have developed a way to nerf guns is just to make them harder to use, which is extremely, extremely bad, because it widens the skill gap between good and bad players, because good players are good because they can adapt, and bad players are bad because they don't know how to adapt as well, right? So let's give some critical points and tips on how to catch up or just at least drastically improve your ability to control recoil, which I can guarantee you will make you enjoy the game more, I promise. So just hear me out and let's, uh, I'll give you some examples. All right guys, so we are in a training mode. So you can join a training mode for any region, doesn't really matter. I'm just joining OS, I usually join NA because I have my VPN, VPN on. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna start our practice session with just a few minutes or a few mags of just spraying at a wall. Now, the point of this is basically the same principle as making something super hard so then when it isn't hard, it just comes to us naturally. So training without a grip will help you develop muscle memory on pulling down in a smooth manner. And as you can see, I've done this for a good amount of time and I've only just got on today. But look, I am controlling my recoil quite well. I am crouching and I'm only about 20 meters away, but I do have no grip. And this is a super critical part of our training. We wanna make everything we do in a training mode as hard as possible. We want everything to be super, super difficult, right? So we can change it up we can stand up we can crouch we can get further away we can get closer but just do this for as long as you really want to you don't have to do this for very long but once we're comfortable with how consistent our sprays are and you really can get quite good at spraying like when are you really going to shoot further away than this with an ar as a casual even a comp player probably doesn't need to shoot this far away but once you've done that then we're gonna whack a grip on, and I promise you, you're gonna feel like a laser if you have managed to successfully control recoil at closer ranges. So, basically get further away as you get better, right? You don't need a, you don't really wanna be all the way here. Like, of course, it's gonna be easy to control recoil, but let's go into ranges where we're realistically gonna have engagements, maybe at this distance, all right? And we can keep our sprays nice and tight. We can learn to control recoil. And that is basically exactly what I did to go from a 0.5 KD 50 ADR player to a professional player. And I don't even know what my KD and stuff is. I don't really care. But that is how I personally improved. And I think it's super replicatable. I think anyone can do it. It's just about putting the time in. I've probably done this for hundreds of hours. I mean, hundreds, but a good amount of time. But this is what you need to do to improve your recoil control. So please let me know if this works for you. But I promise you that if you stay consistent, you will see improvements, even if it's just gradual. So this is my routine, and I highly encourage you guys to follow this and give it a go. All right, so we're going to talk about sensitivities now. So what DPI should you use? Well, I personally think there's only three DPIs you should be using. I think you should be using 400. 1800 and 1600 these are the most common uh, dpi values across pretty much every single game you'll notice that all pros use one of these three the 99 percent of pros will use one of these three right and that's for a good reason i don't know the exact uh reasoning behind it but i know it's something to do with uh, the ratio of pixels all right per inch. When I think about low sense versus high sense, I think of drawing something super scuffed. I think low sense, low sense will give you control. Whereas high sense will give you speed. 
right? So when we think about what type of sense we want, do we want a high control, and this is a recall control, lower sense will 100% lead you to having better control. But we need to think about where we want to lie on this on these two lines, right? Do we want to be faster and have less ability to control, or do we want to have more ability to control and be slightly slower with our movement, right? So this is a decision that you need to kind of make, and uh, honestly, it's, it's all preference. I highly recommend copying some pros and just seeing how their sense feels. But I do think that it's very individual, so don't be uh, disheartened if your sense that you like isn't used by pros. But as far as what I use, I use 35 general, and this is just so I can be a bit quicker. With my every, like my normal movement, I use 25 for my ADS and pretty much every other sense. And I use 1.11 vert sense, and this is because I run 1728 by 1080. And I also forgot to put it in, but I use 800 DPI. So that is my sense and everything. I use 1.11 because it is the one to one ratio, or at least that's what Tiggleton told me. So that's what I use. Uh, I find that's been re working really well for me. So if you do use stretch res, I think that you might want to try a 1.11, but there's no shame in running any vert sense you're comfortable with unless you run over 1.5 or even 1.4. I think these ranges are destined for failure because what happens if you run a, high, a much higher vert sense than horizontal is you're going to lack control because the horizontal recoil is going to feel very, very goofy. All right, so for some additional habits and uh, basically anything you can do to get better if you really, really want to improve, but we're gonna look at an aim lab routine that I do. So the aim lab routine that I do, and I, if you if watch my stream, I usually start my day with this, I will do grid shot. And now grid shot is possibly one of the worst uh, modes to get better at aiming, right? I, I think grid shot sucks, right? It's really bad, but you have to move your arm and really move your hand or arm, or however you aim, wrist or forearm. But you gotta move a lot, right? So I use grid shot as a warm up, right? I'm trying to get blood pumping, I'm trying to get used to moving my mouse and everything, right? The main two actual training ones that I do think actually have benefits is bounce track and six shot ultimate. The point of bounce track is to create smooth movements. So bounce track, it's pretty hard and I don't think it's a fantastic mode, but we're just trying to condition the brain to move in a smooth and consistent motion, right? Because this is going to help us with recoil control because all recoil control is just pulling down your mouse in a consistent and uh, a consistent motion, right? So that's, that's basically all bounce track is. It's just trying to get you more used to smooth tracking. So this is the one that I use. If you find a tracking scenario that you prefer, I completely am fine with that, but this is the one that I use, so I just want to give you guys complete transparency, this is what I use. The next one that I use is Six Shot Ultimate, and this one is for precision. Precision is super important in PUBG, mostly for DMRs and snipers, right? We want to be able to put our crosshair on someone's head and uh, shoot them as soon as possible, right? So I think having to click very small targets as quickly as you can and as accurately as you can is a really good uh, training routine and I do think DMRs and SRs don't have like recall doesn't have as much impact on them so I do think six shot ultimate is a, is a good mode to start with and obviously you can get better and do more advanced modes as you progress but I think these two modes are very simple very basic and they will help you uh, with the fundamentals of PUBG. As far as extra things you can do I think things that are super underutilized and undervalued is exercise. I think that every single human being should be exercising at least a few times a week, right? Going for a short walk, maybe just standing outside, you know, getting some sun. Exercise plays a huge part into how you play the game. I know it sounds crazy, but I think most pros, I would say a good chunk of pros, do a decent amount of exercise, whether that's cardio or gymming, but that's because exercise is fantastic for your health right and everything else sleep nutrition mental health these things are all very important for your overall health if you wake up feeling shit one day i promise you you're probably going to play bad right and that's that's okay i ha that happens to me all the time right but we can try and do things to improve our sleep like maybe try and 
Uh, for sleeping, personally, I stopped using my phone 30 minutes before bed. That helped me. For nutrition, I try and get more protein in. I'm trying to eat more um, nutritionally uh, good meals, I guess. Like, And then for my mental health, I've started journaling. It's, it's pretty nerdy, to be honest, but uh, I'm not a huge fan of it. But I'm getting into it slowly. But just trying to keep yourself cool, calm, and collected will help you play better PUBG. PUBG is... It's a pretty tilting game sometimes, especially with the shotgun and SMG meta right now, in pubs at least. So working on those small things actually will have a huge impact on uh, your overall ability to play the game. This is really simple homework. I think everyone should do this. If you don't do this, you're kind of trolling. I think for one week, everyone should be doing a five-minute recall routine, guys. Five minutes per gaming session, right? If you game twice or three times a week, you should be allocating five minutes just while you wait for your friends to get on whatnot. Five minutes recall practice, guys. I promise you, in one week, if you spend five minutes per day you play practicing recoil with no grip, in a week you will see improvement. And if you see improvement, you're going to kill more people more consistently. And if you kill more people more consistently, I think you're going to have more fun, right? And that's the aim of these lectures, is to help people have more fun and enjoy the game more, right? So reach out on Discord, Twitter, or YouTube comments if you have any questions. But I, I genuinely think that recoil control is the biggest aspect of PUBG. And I think if you can master recoil control, it's going to be very easy for you to improve rapidly. Because it's one of the biggest things that um, handicaps a general improvement and general aim. A lot of people struggle with recoil. So I think this is the most important thing to focus on. So if you can spend five minutes a day for one week, and then you can do that. Let me know in the comments or Discord or Twitter. Reach out to me and say you did it and let me know how you have changed. Let me know if you think that you've improved with recoil control. I've had lots of people, I, t I tell this to people on my stream all the time, but I've only heard positive reviews on this. So let me know what you think and uh, I'll catch you guys next week for next week's episode.